What up brothers, it's Clip King returning for another new review. This one's hot off the press. As you can see, the figure I'll be reviewing today is the Hot Toys Nightmare version of Batman from Batman vs Superman. It's a Toy Fair exclusive from Hot Toys and it's only just been released. Bit of background on this figure. When they showed the four exclusive figures, so there were this, the Asylum Joker, the Stormtroopers and the Disco Iron Man, this was the one I wanted most and then probably it would have been the Joker, then the Stormtroopers, then the Iron Man. I thought this would make a good review although I didn't ever want to keep this figure. I do like it and I do like the armoured version of Batman but it's the regular version of Batman that I'm really waiting for just so I can display it with my Superman and that'll be good enough for me. Although I will say I managed to get this on Friday, it's arrived today as soon as I took it out of the box, I was buzzing. I liked the uh, reviews I've seen so far, or the video footage. I liked the pictures that I've seen. I think the likeness to Ben Affleck is outstanding. And when I took it out of the box myself, looked at it and I oh, fucking hell, that is a figure. I have said before, I have managed to get my hands on a few of these. If you are looking to get one, there's a chance that I've still got one. If you're watching this figure two months down the line, chances are I ain't still got one. But like I'm saying, over the next couple of days, they might be available. But as it stands, this one is sold. It's sold within about 15 minutes of posting it. Then I got about 15 more people saying, Rick, can you get me one? I managed to get as many as I could. And then some of them people, when it was time to put the money where the mouth is, all of a sudden were saving up for another figure or their ebay sales and not gone through so they didn't have the money so i have got some i don't mind if i get stuck with one because it is an awesome figure but anyway let's crack on and get the figure scored up before i crack onto the packaging i'll just give you a good look i've gone for the uh fully covered look so i've got the cloth around his face so you do have a, a wide handkerchief that goes around the uh, lower part of his face the goggles down over his eyes and then he has the neckerchief around his neck Binoculars, as you see, he's holding them as if he's just been looking through him. And he's turned off to check something out from. It's like Clippers started filming, and I've just caught him. He's looking around, he's having a glance around as if it's a fox, and he's filming me. Like I say, he's looking sweet, he's looking savage, he's like, he's looking savage. Of course, got the movement through the coat. It's out in desert, blowing in breeze it is. He's got his gun, his machine gun under his arm. He's looking fresh. So, very nice. I've um, just make my thoughts clear. I don't know if anybody will agree with this. When I saw this figure in the uh, this look in the film, I thought to myself, that reminds me of something I can't think what. And I went back, looked on Google, looked through some old uh, comics I'd had and some old. Um, I sometimes download some pictures for pose ideas, stuff like that. And every time I kept thinking, what's it look like with that style of coat and goggles on his head? And then I realised, not so much the desert coat colour, but the styling. I think it tips its hat a little bit to Gotham by G uh, Gaslight, which is a, it's a run of comic books from a while back, and it sort of shows you Batman in days gone by. And I, I definitely like the look of it. It steps away from Batman, although you still know who it is. The clip in the film... Well, a little bit mental when you realised it were a nightmare scene, but I think it was also very cool. It saw you, Batman in good action, and I did like the part of the film. I will also say the ultimate cut of Batman vs Superman is a really good film. I think the uh, the theatrical release were a little bit cut to fuck, but uh, the extended version, if you've not seen it, or the ultimate edition, whatever they call it, if you've not seen it, you want to go out your way and check it out, because the story makes a lot more sense. But... Lex Luthor's still a fucking stuttering prick. But anyway, let's crack on and talk about the packaging. So, first thing that strikes you is the Hot Toys exclusive. They say the limited runs. I don't know how limited they are. I heard there were 300 in Hong Kong, and then I know Sideshow get a shitload of them. Sideshow's uh, stock will probably not go in for a month or so, so it does make the initial stock in Hong Kong sought after and really expensive. So that's the first thing you notice about the box. As you move down slightly, you see the Batman symbol. And then inside that, you've got the profile of Batfleck. And then you've got the nightmare sequence in the back. Where the uh, Superman's minions are grabbing hold of him there. And then you get him from behind looking over the city there. 
and then just a shot there. These are all shots of the figure, but I think they are so accurate, they do look pretty realistic. In fact, I'm not even sure. I'm not sure on that one if that's figure or real. I think looking at the coat, it's probably real. That one I'm not so sure, because it looks like it's got the cutaway section where the mask is. But either way, it's a really cool artwork. It does have the, uh, the sort of black V on the brown background, so quite nice. And then the movie emblem there, Batman vs Superman. Really nice. It is a shoebox design, but it's one of those with the staggered sides. So it gets uh, smaller at the bottom, really easy to lift off. And then the inlay slip is definitely the figure with the goggles pulled up with sort of screaming mouth play. So really nice touch. Then the credits moving down there. And I will say this time, I'm gonna go down your name slowly because you've done a really good job and you deserve it off Uncle Clipper. The box I would normally give a three out of a possible five just because it is standard shoe box with the clam trays inside. But because I like the artwork on the front in particular so much, I bumped it up a point and given it a four out of a possible five. Moving on to the facial likeness. Before we make it up to his head, show me the pose. He's took his side arm out. Still got the gun under. He's dropped the binoculars. He's pulled down the uh, neckerchief so he's not getting the sand in his mouth. Put up his glasses. He's looking bat fleck through and through and that is one of the best likenesses in my cabinet and I've got some figures to be proud of in there I'm not talking three million pound fucking custom figures but I'm talking about Octo's best work and this is right up there look at that that's not Ben Affleck in Batman cowl then I don't know what is right hold on let's step back let's step back and take a little interlude because that is as natural as you want to get, taking a little step forward, he's looking fresh. <laughs> I love all like that. It's not too dynamic, but it's not got to be, has it? Not all time. Sometimes less is more. Look at that. That's beautiful. I'll show you the other face plates in a minute, but I think that is my favourite one with a mouth slightly open. A lot of people were slagging Ben Affleck off. Damn, you seen Daredevil? Yes, I fucking seen Daredevil. Does that mean he'll not make a good Batman? I think he makes a stunning Batman. And I think his likeness makes a really nice figure. Look at that. Look at eyes. Look at intent in eyes. Let's take his fucking... Let's take his goggles off. Have a look at him. Let's get Batman on you. Oh, it's lovely. It's not just front front. I'm mean, thinking clip. Is it just front front? No, it's not just front front. It's from all angles. Look at that, it's brutal. <laughs> Fucking hot toys, stop it. That is good work, well done boys. Well done. So you can have for that, you can have two, two week off at Chinese New Year. That's what you can have for that. Oh no, you already fucking do that, don't you? That is lovely. Even, even texture on mask. It's very animalistic. It's got like a nice texture to it it's a step away from Nolan Batman he's gone more animal more organic let me say he's just looking sweet oh that's nice that's very nice let's swap one of the uh, mouth plates out and let's see if it looks any less like him fade to close mouth <laughs> he's still half leg oh go me off that is lovely <laughs> That's that's a right treat. I've said before, with a Michael Keaton Batman, the armoury Joker head, any figure where you can tell who it is under a mask in one six scale, pat on back for hot toys, because that is that's lovely that. Let's go to controversial screaming head sculpt, shall we? Let's say a clip of stores. There we go. He still looks like him. He still looks like him up. He's getting more intense. I like way that any any face plate that you put on it, the eyes and sort of the, the eyebrow section, it just seems to work. Let's move in because some people have asked if you can see gums on the scope. So let's see how close we can get. I don't want to get in my own light, so let's just go back a bit. Whoa, come back, come back. Come back, come on, come on, baby, come on voice activated camera it knows when I start getting threatening it starts thinking to it saying I better do I better do what I'm supposed to be doing 
Right, I will say, I think you can see, if you're not watching this in HD, you need to do that, because Uncle Clipper brings it to you in HD. So don't waste my time watching it in shit resolution. Get it on HD. If you look at the bottom row of teeth, you can definitely see the light pink gum. Underneath, have a look, between the lip and the upper teeth, not so much, but definitely the lower teeth, you can see a light pink gum. So they have done some paint work in there. That's lovely, let's come on, let's have a look at his eyes. Oh, look at that. Look at texture. Look at depth in eyes. Paint work, we've gone ultra close for you. That's sweet, that. If you think that's sweet, let me know. Oh. Zoom out and stop chatting shit. Any face plate, you're looking at Affleck in a mask and it's beautiful. Anybody who's picked this figure up, I'll bet you'll tell you they're really proud of it. I can't wait for the original version, but I would be more than happy to have this version as well because it is a proper stunner. The likeness has got a very easy five out of possible five and I dispute anybody who says different. Moving on to outfit. Before we start, just have a bit of silence here. Yeah? If your missus is crunching popcorn in the background or nagging in your ear, tell her to fuck off from me, yeah? tell her to quieten down or piss off out of room. If kids are running about you, yeah, smack them and send them to bed. And if uh, child services come to find you, tell them Uncle Rick's to told you to do it. Because we need to have a little bit of silence here. Yeah? And fucking thank the figure gods for bringing me. Look at that for fucking pro. <laughs> Oh man, fucking hell. And they said they couldn't fucking open legs on figure. What's up with you, man? Get about your figures for fuck's sake. That is fucking lovely. Look at that. That's a left cross, that. Boom. What happens when you spin your left arm? Your fucking coat spins round from right to left. Whoosh. Looking breeze. Boom. Back foot planted. That's Tyson esque, that. That one in rotation through right ankle, up through that leg. Rotation fruit waist, boom. Face, does face go with pose? You <laughs> fucking bet your bottom dollar it does. That is a fucking, whew, that's enough now. That's enough singing me on praises. That's lovely and you know it is. Don't deny it. Right, let's talk outfit. Now let's roll on through this because it's going to be a bitch and I'm going to move on. Get him a, uh, get him a cape on I think. I'll get him a cape on and we'll have a look at him. Have a look at what parts are going to suggest the upcoming regular version. So I think these are full on bat boots. They've got the steel toe cap, the nice foot section, and then the nice thick calf section, which looks like a really thick sort of leather armour, so to speak. Really nice detail. If I move it round, it's not going to fall. You think, get on, Rick, it's going to fall. It's going to fall. Don't mess that awesome pose with It's not going to fall. It's fucking balanced. It's fucking balanced as they come. You know it. Look, that's the section up the leg. That's nice. Then he moves into the green military style trouser with the uh, glued on knee pad, as you can see. Nice touch. A little bit of weathering. Not too much. Lovely. Got his old stuff for his sidearm. As you can see, and then the straps around the upper leg leading into a military style, like a cargo belt, so to speak, underneath there. And then we move into bat belt territory. It's sort of on a, a faux leather belt and then the pouches are attached. It's got the sort of gold wash over the black and does look really nice. I will say as well, when it came out of the box, it had actually popped open. But I've put it on and it stayed on all the way through the review. It's not popped back open. So that's a nice touch. So I do like it. Moving up, you see the sort of squidgy. It's not rubber. I don't know what material it is, but it feels, it feels lovely. The ab section. So that's sort of the bat suit underneath. And you see the bat emblem there, which you'll see clear in a minute when I take off the coat and everything else. Moving up, you see I've actually got two neckerchiefs on him. You get a separate piece that will go around the lower face and then a bit that stays around his neck. You can just untie him, take him off. They are both wired, so they do stay in place really nicely. Moving up, looking at the cowl, it's as accurate as accurate gets. Like I've said before, it just looks awesome. Not much more I can say about it. The coat, nah, 
I really like the coat and I didn't think I would from the pictures. I think it's slightly off colour wise. I think it should be a tiny bit more camel than this sort of beigey colour that we've got. And I don't think it's a, a leather as such. It's more somewhere between a suede and like a moleskin coat kind of thing. But uh, I think they've used the wrong material, but the effect is really good. A little bit too clean, but I do like the wiring through it because it gives you that nice movement. It's not frayed, but it is sort of a separate piece of material at the bottom, which will give off the frayed appearance. The cut and stitch is awesome as always, but like I said, the material is just off a tiny bit. It doesn't drape quite as good as you would want it to. Talking about the wiring, it does go up through the collar, so you can pose your collar as well if you choose to. Uh, so that is nice. And the buttons on it, really nice, nicely done. Nothing looks like it's going to fall off or rip or whatever, it just looks good. And then as we move down into the arm section, the bottom of the coat actually goes to a black sort of uh, elasticated cuff, which is tucked down inside these gauntlets, which are removable. Obviously, it is a sculpted gauntlet with the gold washed fins, as you see. Nice and sturdy, and then it has the sculpted on wraps which have been green washed to make them look military. And that moves down onto the glove. Looking at the glove, you see the metal knuckle section. And then a really nice sculpt of the glove. Making a nice tight fist. And then on the other side, same again, but leading into a different style and them again would be sections that I would think would be replicated for the uh, the regular bat suit. I will just show as well here, it is wired but the wire is coming out a little bit on the top neck cheap. I suppose you could just tuck that back in. The uh, binoculars and the gun are on a faux leather strap which do look nice. I don't know if the colours are accurate but they do look really scavenger-esque and I do really really like the look of it. So the outfit as it stands there is amazing and I'd struggle to give it anything other than a 5 out of 5. But for the sake of people who probably ask me, I'm going to take everything off and take him down to as close to the bat suit as I can get. Right, a little interlude going between the outfit, which I gave a 5 out of a possible 5. And I'm going to go into articulation as well. So, as you see I've took off the coat, I've put a... Tony May cape underneath from the uh, Dark Knight and then just folded it back. I will say all this section is really nice and soft. The head does move really nicely on it. We'll rotate and move. I'm trying to do it one handed. So that is really nice. I will show the mechanics of the body in a minute. I'll take that off. As we move down, you see is uh, the bat suit. Now, to give you the detail on the Bat so it sort of got this scratchy material look. I don't know if it's like carbon fiber weave or what it is, but the do you remember when they showed the uh, pre order on the regular Batman? Everybody said it looks like he's got baggy jammers on. That looks gone. I just hope they don't fuck the legs up because if it comes out and the legs are as good as this body, we're talking about an awesome Batman, possibly my favorite Batman today. Bit bulkier arms would be nice, although not too much, not too much bulk on the shoulders. I wouldn't want. But this, the suit is really good. I don't know what material to describe it of, but it's certainly got the squidgy feel, like the sculpted suit, and I fucking love it. It's got the look of the, uh, the what's that thing? Is it Dark Knight Returns, that cartoon? It's got the look of that, and then he goes and gets his armour on. Oh, love it like that. Might be my favourite style suit. Anyway, going down, then you see the gauntlets, and you see his pants now he has some stretchy rubber pants on which are there really to hold the torso section in place i would say so it goes under the crotch and around there he has a padded section there on his ball joint which i'll show you in a minute and then as you move down it's a standard octoy's leg double bend knee padding around the thigh and it's glued on and then moving down it's just a normal lower leg with a ball joint for the ankle and then obviously that's the upper section of the boot so a couple of things the head on the neck let's pull that off it just slides upwards 
Fucking hell, it's supposed to. Come up, you fucker. Right, obviously the capes fell off. Now, your neck post looks like that, which sort of then sits on a, a joint in there. Just show you all. Some people say I don't go into enough detail, but fuck them. So that is the inner part of the head. If we look at the cowl, it's soft and squidgy as you can see. And then if we look inside, you see the section to push the faceplate out and also the eyes are interchangeable. Now I'm not gonna do that simply because I wanna show that on the regular Batman. But from what I've heard, they can be changed so you can have any of the interchangeable eyes on either figure. So that is a nice touch. So I wanted to show you that. And then moving down, I also saw, and it was Dean Knight's video when he said, the trousers don't seem to be restricting the figure uh, the legs but there's no articulation in here it will move forward and back but it doesn't seem to go side to side now i just want to show this if i get it now i don't know if it's because of the black body underneath or what but it is just a standard leg section in there so Oh, I need to put my camera somewhere. Just bear with me one minute. This review is becoming a mess. I'll put a little cut in and I'll show you that the leg will move. So, there you go. The legs will open. But I've got to say, the sort of inch in there, it feels like it's being spray painted and it's coated with damp paint. So, with a lot of care and attention, just open and close the legs a few times and that will loosen off. So the articulation through his leg is there. The trousers might restrict it slightly, but not very much because the trousers are quite baggy on him. But like I said, at the box, that is one of the tightest hinges I've ever known on an Octoys figure, but clearly it will pose. So talking about the articulation, ankle on a ball joint, double bend knee, normal Octoys movement through the upper leg, the rotation, Ball joint uh, going into the hips, so it does, uh, the, uh, it does work. So the rotation and any crunch is severely limited and pretty much non-existent. So don't uh, think about that too much. The articulation through the shoulders is pretty good. The double bend elbow works really well. It's kind of like a ratchet and will hold a pose. The neck moves freely, even though it is on this device that we see here. And... Basically, it's a really good body with a really good outfit on it. So the articulation I'm gonna go to a a Three it's a bit of a tight three but because of the limitations through the sort of the middle of the body The arms are better than I thought the legs are better than I thought but You've got an endurance in the rotation and the dip, so it does hurt the natural pose a little bit. So for that reason, I think it's fair that I give the articulation a three and a possible five. Right, rolling on to extras, and then I'll go into value as well. If we move down, you see, I've got the figure back in a pretty natural pose. And then as I move down, I've got all his accessories in front of him. So, what's he bring? It brings the diorama base, which is the same as the Superman one. The emblem will pop up, and then there's a kickstand behind, which will keep it up. It has the chrome nameplate on the front, and uh, it's quite nice looking. Well painted, very uh, diorama base. It has the two inter interchangeable face plates, the screaming head, the closed mouth, and the open mouth. Every one is a really good sculpt, and you can tell it's Ben Affleck underneath on every one so I do like that the tool for changing out the face plates and the eye section although I haven't showed you the eye removal simply because I don't want to risk it by taking it out when it's a figure that's not mine so that's why I haven't done that moving down a set of wrist pegs that I've not had to use the side arm which again nicely painted I think the clip comes out moving down to the machine gun the clip comes out and the stock bends like so and you see it does have the joker card sellotape to the stock as well with the faux leather strap 
nice detail by Hot Toys as usual. Pair of binoculars, the cracked lens and the faux leather strap, nice addition, class it's part of the outfit or an accessory I suppose. <clears throat> and across the uh, sort of uh, bandana or neckerchief, whatever it's called, that goes around the lower section of his face and then he has that section that stays around the cowl. The sand coloured or sand covered goggles which do fit the sculpt really nicely, they look very good. And then four spare hands, so you've got sort of a trigger right hand, a sort of a batarang throwing uh, right hand as well, and then a relaxed right and left. And the instruction manual, so pretty much fully loaded. It uh, replicates the scene, it comes from very well. I don't think... Uh, I don't think they could have given you much more. I think the only downside from the scene it comes from is the coat is a little bit off, but I still, in and of itself, is an awesome garment. So I'm not even gonna fucking moan about that too much. The set is very impressive in hand. It looks good in pictures, but when you get in hand, it's like, oh yeah, I've got something a little bit special here. It's got a bit of a Bane feel about it. I know people went mad for Bane, but then you still got the awesome Ben Affleck, the first release of the new Batman, it's something very exciting, or that's how it feels anyway. Extras wise, I've scored it like this. I gave it a point for the base, a point for the hands, a point for the weapons, and a point because you've got interchangeable face plates. I nearly gave it a five because of the binoculars and the goggles and next year, but then I thought, well, I've included them on the outfit, so I'd be a little bit generous to give it a five, but I am going to give it a four and a possible five for extras. Talking about value, you know I've paid a good price for this or these, because like I said, I've got some of us coming. I pretty much, I might as well tell you, I've put about £1,500 of my own money into bringing in a couple of Iron Man and a few Batman into country. I hope they sell. If Batman don't all sell and I've got to keep one, then so be it. I'm not going to lose a lot, whichever. But on the flip side, I'm not going to gain a lot because I've said, I'm sort of teetering on Brinker. Do I want to make money or do I want to maintain my reputation as a pretty good guy and a community member i don't want to be seen as a scalper but on flip side i don't want every release to cost me money which it has been doing recently and i actually sold an exclusive version of martin mcfly through ebay other day and it had to go to france and it sold for 146 pound now ebay are going to take 14 pounds 60 of that off me and i still sent the figure so you know i got my ass kicked good style on that a lot of people don't mind me fucking losing money, but they fucking ain't me making any money. So, I'll just say that, it seems weird, because I do try and help people where I can. And like I said, if I'd availed everybody to a Batman who asked me about it on Friday and said, look you fucker, you've asked me to bring you one, now I have, pay me. If I'd have done that, then I'd been biggest bastard in the world. But like I said, I've got some Batman figures, and they're available. <clears throat> but, going back to the price, I paid big bucks for them so but then again i see they're still selling on ebay for 340 quid so i'm going back and forth with the value it costs too much it's selling for too much uh although it is a good set and you do get plenty of bang for your buck so on the value fucking do i get a two or a three I'm going to give it a three on the grounds that I think most people that buy it will be happy with it. So I'm going to say that. The value is a three out of five. That gives the figure a total score of 24 out of possible 30. Which, for a, for a, like a standard release, bear in mind it is an exclusive as well, that is a good score. Because only really DX has ever used to get more than that and the Gangster's Kingdom, which I fucking buzz about. So for a figure nowadays to get 24 and a possible 30, you know it's good. I hope my camera showed it as good as I'm seeing it. Any way you slice it, you're getting one of the best Batman figures available at the moment. So, another review done. This figure will now be boxed up and off to its new owner. I hope he's as happy with it as I have been seeing it. But for now, I'm out of here. Don't be silly boys, do you really think I'd leave without showing you a size comparison between Batman and Superman? No, you're taking me for an amateur. I'm not an amateur, I'm Uncle Clipper. Them two look fucking beautiful together. Well done Hot Toys, I like it when you take a license and you show it some love. 
because Superman's awesome and the first release of Batman is just as nice. Now guys, I really am out of here.